So we've been talking a lot about how to get into character, both for the players and for the person running the game, the DM or the GM, and also where the voice and the motivations for the characters and the non-player characters come from. Now, here's the question. If you're the game master or if you're the player, how do you design an adventure around a player and a player character? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, uh, I'm GR. This is Player Base, which is a channel about ludology. And in our study of the study of play, we're doing the series on tabletop role-playing games, and especially if you're new, how to approach them in a way that is not too intellectual or analytical, which is a challenge for me, that doesn't require a lot of thinking and, and explains things in a way that's easy to grok, which is a great word. And mention in the comments if you know what it means. So the thing is, a lot of times with uh, role-playing games, particularly with things like a uh, West Marcher style game, or a game where there's a large group of players and a moving living world, the make your own fun component of it is really heavily emphasized. And sometimes, even when there's a structured adventure, players and sometimes game masters don't know how to approach that. And when a player, especially players new, which you may be, uh, is approaching a game and you, you hear, I can do anything, uh, you know, there are no rules, quote unquote. Oh, well, I don't really know how to deal with that. That's, an, that's it's kind of stressful for me because it's a new phenomenon. And I follow the rules all the time. I've never broken a rule. I've never even cheated on a test or whatever it is. Well, here's how we're going to do that. And it's real simple and it's real easy. The make your own fun component, the bringing your own motivations to the table for the player comes down to you talk about what you imagine the character doing. We've gone over how, you know, how to start a character up, you know, how to create a character really easily with three questions, how to find the character's voice. If you have all that, if you have that in the whole, there's a playlist, you know, if you have that and, and you know where you're coming from roughly, which is to say, you know that for the next month or three months, the next two weeks to eight weeks of playing this role-playing game, you kind of know where you want to go with it. That really is the roadmap to what the adventures are going to be. So I'll give you an example. I was playing, or I was designing a character, which I did actually not eventually play, in, uh, in a West Marcher style game. And the real motivation for me was to get a kind of a, uh, you know, a medieval manor house out in the countryside and build a little cottage industry around it for that nobleman and, you know, his retinue. And that was really interesting for me because of the kind of character that I was playing, which was this kind of like, you know, um, late medieval renaissance, um, you know, adventurer sort of going around into the world to find their fortune, literally finding, you know, a manor house to make one's own and to, you know, start one's own manor was interesting to me because I knew that that's something that I wanted, that, that was an inherent part of that character. I'll give you an example of something that's less obvious. We talked about the librarian Minotaur. It's really easy to see where that's going, right, in terms of what kind of adventures they're going to be doing in the world, which is finding rare books, uh, you know, collecting late fees, whatever it may be. But through the course of that, through a session or two, you know, things will arise and you'll get a sense of what those motivations for that character are, both as the game master and as the player. And you can have a discussion in character or outside of character about where you want this to go and what type of adventures you want. Because for the librarian Minotaur, maybe they want to be the head of the uh, magical college library. They want to be, you know, the head librarian. Or maybe they want to create their own labyrinthine library of, of, of their own devising somewhere out in the middle of, you know, some necropolis or in the middle of the city or start a secondhand bookstore. Whatever it may be that comes up through the process of their interactions, which you find engaging. And basically, you know, when you go through a session or two with the character and you kind of know what the character uh, is doing and what you want to do with the character, literally what kind of actions you want to take. The ones that are the most fun, that's really where the next adventure is. It's as simple as that. And you bring that up to the 
to the the table and to, to the game master or as the game master, if you notice that that's something that they like, you bring it up to the player. It really, it's no more complicated than that. And if you're worried about, oh, well, there's these other things, well, you'll have other chances. But for now, just do this, you know? It's, imagine it like this. You're at a buffet and there's so many things and it can be overwhelming, the player paralysis, analysis paralysis, but you pick the five things that seem like your favorite or that they are your favorite and you try them. And maybe at this particular buffet, your favorite favorite thing isn't the best, but your second or third favorite thing is done really well. So you just do that. And then when you come back to the buffet, you go to a different buffet, you play a different game, even with the same character, you could try something else. But really it just comes down to focusing on the here and now. Really, that's really the answer to analysis paralysis in general, in, in all of life, not just in tabletop role-playing games. But we're doing the dynamics of play, which the dynamics of play apply to the whole world, the whole universe. If you've read uh, Finite and Infinite Games, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, go read it and then mention it in the comments. I will see you tomorrow, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a different way. For now, I'm GR's Playbase, and thank you very much for being here.